Hello and welcome to the Maya Tour Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to go over Set Driven Key. You can find this in the Animation menu set under Animate, Set Driven Key right here, and then we have the Set button. And when we click this, we have this Set Driven Key uh, window up here. We have two main sections: we have the Driver section and the Driven section. So you have one object as a driver another object or even the same object that is driven by the driver so let's uh, explain some of this a little bit how it works so let's go to let's just create some simple shapes we we'll create a polygon cube like so and I'll just duplicate it with control D move this one over here and I'm just going to kind of make this shape like a large thin rectangle type shape. I want to hide my grid. So now I have my small cube here and my larger cube here. So just for the sake of example, uh, let's say that my little cube is a car or a spaceship or some sort of vehicle and this is a door to a garage or to a spaceship loading bay or anything like that so what you can do is you can have this set so that when the vehicle approaches the door the door will automatically open with set driven key because what you're doing is you're, you're driving one object's attributes with another object's attributes so the attributes we're going to link today to the translation of the vehicle to the translation of the door so to do this, first we need a driver and a driven. Now one thing you'll notice is whenever you have an object selected and you go to animate, set driven key, set, it'll automatically load the selected object into the driven section. So this, so it's kind of a little bit of a shortcut. If you know that this object is going to be driven, you can just select it, open the window, and it'll automatically be loaded into the driven section. Otherwise, though, you can click load, select it as driver, or select it as driven here. So we have this loaded as our driven object. We'll select our vehicle cube and load selected as driver. Or down here at the bottom, you have load driver and load driven, these two buttons here. Click load driver. And let's go ahead and just rename these so a little bit easier. We'll call this vehicle and this will be door. Now this change is not reflected in the set driven key uh, window yet so I'm just going to reload these when we select the door load driven you can see now it says door and P cube 1 we will select the vehicle and load driver so now it says vehicle and door right here. So the attributes are going to link for the vehicle the Z axis direction so as the vehicle moves toward the door we're manipulating the Z axis translate, the translate Z. So I'm going to click that over up here in the driver side, translate Z. And for the door, we want it to rise up and translate Y. So I'm going to select the translate Y attribute for the driven. So once those two attributes are selected over here, you can see now the key button becomes available. Before, when one of these is not selected, the key button is grayed out because it needs to have a driving uh, attribute and a driven attribute selected before you can key them. So translate Y, select it for the door, and then the key button becomes available. So what you're going to key is the positions as they are now. You're going to key those. So right now I have the vehicle right here and the door right here. So I'm going to key this position as it is. So I hit the key button like so. And you'll see now when I select the door, the translate Y attribute kind of highlights in this pink color. That's letting you know that it is being keyed or animated. So now I'm going to move my vehicle cube to the door's position, like right through the door. So at this point, when the, this vehicle as, is at this position, I want the door to be out of the way. So I'm going to select the door and move it up, like so so that the vehicle cube is not obstructed and at this position I'm going to hit key again so key and then what I want to happen is after the vehicle passes through 
have the door go back down. So at this position, I'll hit key. So now when I select my vehicle cube and move it, you'll see that the door automatically gets out of the way. One thing to keep in mind is that if I move the vehicle over here and still move the z-axis, it still reacts the same way. So keep that in mind. That its position is based on this translate z uh, for the vehicle and not necessarily where it is in relation to the door. Like so. And that's the basics really of how set driven key works. You can get some pretty interesting uh, results with this. Let me show you the uh, introduction scene that I animated. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not still not sure at, this, at the point of this recording. I might go ahead and use it since I am kind of using set driven key and it's kind of a good example of it at the beginning of this video, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use this introduction for the whole series. I still want some more input from you guys whether you like it or not. Um, or you just like have it straight to the tutorial and not really any kind of fluff. You know, that's fine. Um, but let me go ahead and open that scene. Okay, so here's the scene for the little intro I made. And the way it worked is I have a locator hidden in the scene. So I'm going to open my outliner, find my locator, and display it. So I'm going to go to display, show selection. So there's my locator. It looks kind of weird right now. But I'm going to... So right now I have the pivot point up here. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to move this pivot point back down here. And I'm going to move it down. And I'm going to rotate it back to zero and scale it. So what I did here, I wanted to simulate as if I was grabbing this little cube and just by scaling and rotating it and stuff, I was able to get the logo to appear. And over here in Outliner, you can see I got lots of things going on. I'm not going to get into necessarily the exactly how everything was constructed. But what I did do was I made a new attribute here, a new channel, I should say, called Tool Belt to this locator. And you can look at my uh, channel control and video, which I'll link right here. And there's also the how to create your own attribute. I'll link that right here. Those two videos kind of go into, come into play with creating a channel that does something. So those two videos really explain how that works. So what I did was I linked this attribute in the locator all to the rotation and scale of the locator. So all I had to do was manipulate the locator and this tool belt uh, ch uh, channel got changed. So the way that worked was when I scaled the locator to the right, the scale of this cube goes up like so. So I linked the two scales and then I have a little bit of a, a threshold where as I continue the scale the word tool belt pops out like so. So scale and then keep scaling and tool belt pops up like this. That's all with set driven key. And if I go into wireframe if I scale this down you see that the word tool belt is is invisible. So I'm also keying the visibility of the word tool belt and this cube because the cube is actually a separate object from the word from the T in the tool belt and I just have that cube kind of disappear eventually as I scale the tool belt word up like so so then I have the word Maya for the Maya tool belt pop up when I rotate the locator so just by rotating the locator the word Maya becomes visible and starts to scale up and rotate into place. Again, that's always set driven key based on rotating this locator. And again, the locator in the scene is set to be invisible so that I can do all this manipulation without this big locator in the way and I can just kind of screen grab the video and you, you know, you saw it at the beginning. And then what I did was I had it set so that when I move the locator up the word the appears and scales up. And the way I kind of made it look a little bit interesting in the video 
was I moved the pivot point up here and then moved up like this to make it kind of appear as if because my pivot point was right there and I moved up then the word the appeared there uh, well in actuality all I did was move the pivot point of the locator the locator stayed you know hidden and I just moved it up and the word the appeared and then I just kind of manipulated the camera to get it you know pretty much where I wanted it and tried to get a key to the music and everything so that was all how using set driven key worked with my intro that I did and over here in the outliner you see I got all the, the letters for the different words and so on but yeah all through this locator here with this tool belt channel which if I just middle mouse click and drag this tool belt channel you can see how that affects the word tool belt and then by rotating the locator it affects the word Maya and then by moving the locator it affects the word the so just by linking all those attributes together I got the Maya tool belt logo thing to appear um, so that's kind of the basics of how set driven key works let me open up the window set driven key set maybe we can kind of go over some of the options here well let's say we have load options key select and then help which everything has help you can go into the my help files and learn all of this information of course but load we already kind of talked about you can load selected as the driver or selected as driven or you can load the current driver so if you can select different objects to be the driver so if I select this A object over here and say load driver and select the E and say load driver you can change the driver over here but if you select one of these for example and say load current driver it'll change to the locator as the driver because that is what's affecting this object so options you have different things here you have channel names you can change it to be nice long or short and we've talked about that in previous videos but essentially what it is is right now set to nice which is the default value which makes them very readable scale x scale y translate visibility and so on uh, if you go to different options like long the, well the long name is essentially what, how maya kind of reads it in scripting language so translate x translate y and so on they don't have the spaces then you have option channel names short which gives you literally like letter abbreviations they don't have a short uh, version for the word tool belt because when I made that attribute I didn't provide one RY is rotate Y TX is translate X I don't personally like to use the uh, short names because I just can't remember what they are so let's go back to nice so then you have clear on load and this is checked by default and what that simply means is when I load another object as a driver or driven you can see it clears the one that was there and replaces it with this new one if you turn this off uncheck it so now when I click load driven well B was already selected let me choose a different one load driven it adds it to the driven window so you can have multiple objects being driven all at the same time and the way you do this is by holding down shift and selecting say all of them and choosing translate Y as driven that means you're tr driving the translate Y attribute of all four of these objects same for driver if you choose a different object say load driver it will add to the driver list when uh, clear on load is not checked so load shapes objects have shape nodes as well as translate nodes so let's see if we turn this on and say load driver you see we have the T shape as well as T so the shape node you see has lots of different attributes that the translate node does not have translate node has all the translate rotate scale and so on T shape has other things such as visibility ghosting uh, override shading object color these are all attributes that you can use with set driven key but they're all located on the shape node and not the translate node so if you want to get access to those nodes you have to make sure you have load shapes turned on I'll turn it off and load driver well let's clear all this clear on load load driver so just T for load shapes and have clear on load on load driver I have T shape and so on 
auto select when this is turned on you can actually click in here and it will select the object in the scene whenever you click their name in their corresponding window if you turn it off it will not do that so you can maintain your selection and also click through these different things list keyable driven attributes so you turn it off it'll list every attribute of that object a lot of these you can find for example in the shape node if you don't want to necessarily have it load all the shapes but also will load everything that is not keyable which doesn't really help you much so in my opinion if you just say list keyable attributes that'll kind of shorten this list and make it a little bit more usable then you have key you can set a key you can go to the previous key and go to the next key that you've already made in your uh, sequence select driven items so you can choose it to select the driven items here auto select here turn on select driven items from the t-shape and then your help file so those are kind of the bare bones options of how set driven key works hopefully it's a little bit it can be a little tricky to use when you're first getting started because you have to kind of get used to the order of things you want to move your driver object then move your driven object and then key it if you move your driven first and key it before you move your driver then you're kind of changing the way the driver affects the driven so it's a little bit it can be a little confusing at first you might see like why is it going backwards or why is it not working at all you just have to try to keep in mind the order of, of how you're doing things. You want to move the driver because the driver is going to be the one changing things for the driven. So you move the driver or you change the driver attribute to whatever you want it to be. And then you move the driven to where you want it to be at that point and then key it and so forth. So hopefully that uh, kind of gives you a, a good understanding of how set driven key works. If you have any questions, let me know. If I miss something, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you continue to watch more as I make more of these videos and I definitely welcome all of your input. Thanks again.